For question number 6, the correct option is option 1. And to show how we arrive here, let us show some steps of solution. In step number 1, we shall improve on the figure given with the question. So here is this figure, little elaborate. As you can see that, that the rod is rotating in the exact plane about a horizontal axis to this pivot, follow my cursor. This axis is pointing into the screen normally, okay? And it is rotating clockwise about that axis, that is the pivot. And the question is to find out the angular acceleration of this rod when it makes an angle of theta with its initial vertical position. So I have shown here the initial position of the rod in dotted lines, final position in shown little solid figure here. This angle is theta, this is the exact plane. And let me take two points. One point is the pivot about which the rod rotates. Another point is the center of gravity of the rod through which the force of gravity is acting vertically downwards. So as they have said, that there is no friction given by the pivot. The only two forces acting on this rod during its fall, one is the force of gravity acting vertically downwards to this center of gravity. Let me call this point as C. And this force is Mg, isn't it? They have given for the rod mass is M and the length is L. In the absence of friction, the only contact force is normal force acting vertically upwards through the pivot. This pivot is named P and this is the normal force. Now, I shall show one more thing here required in short time that if the length of this rod is L, then half the length of the rod as shown here must be equal to L by 2. And therefore, the line of action of this force of gravity must be at a distance of how much? If this angle is theta, this angle is also theta and is coming out to be L by 2 sine theta. We shall need this figure during the calculation. In our next step, we recall the equation of rotational motion of a rigid body and that equation is tau is equal to I into alpha. And the expression tau is the torque acting on the body about a given axis. I is the moment of inertia of the body about the same axis. Alpha is the angular acceleration of the body. So in this case, since the rod is rotating about a horizontal axis passing through the pivot P, we can write down that tau P, that is the torque about the point P, must be equal to IP, moment of inertia of the rod about the point P into alpha. Let me call this as equation number one for future reference. You understand here, when I write torque about the point P, I mean that the torque about a horizontal axis passing through P and that pierces the screen in front of you normally. Understand that. And about that axis, the rod rotates in a vertical plane that is the exact plan. Now, in step number three, what is the torque of the forces taken about the point P? See here, there are two forces. One is the force of gravity, Mg through C. Other is the normal force N through the point P. So the force N passing through P itself produces zero torque about the point P. You can write like that. And about the force Mg, its line of action is at a distance of L by 2 sin theta from this point P. So the torque of this force Mg about the point P should be the magnitude of the force Mg into the perpendicular distance from the point P on the line of action. This is already shown to be L by 2 sine theta. This is coming out to be M into G into L by 2 
sine theta. You understand here, you can show vectorially this torque is pointing into the screen normally and producing a clockwise rotational effect on the rod. Just verify this. In step number 4, let us find moment of inertia IP of the rod about this point P. And for that we require the parallel axis theorem. We know that I is equal to ICM plus MD square. You know the symbol's meanings. So in this case, we can write down for the rod moment of inertia about the point P. That is at one edge of the rod. That is moment of inertia through the center of mass, that is point C, plus m into d square. This length PC is L by 2. So it is m into L by 2 whole square. But IC, standard formula is there, uniform rod, that is ml square by 12, plus ml square by 4. That is ML square by 3. I'm sure many students remember this formula straight away. ML square by 3, about one end of the rod. Now, since looking for the angular acceleration alpha, you can see here in step 5, we return to equation number 1 to write down alpha at this angular position. Understand, at this angular position, theta from the vertical, alpha will be tau p upon ip. Putting the values from above, tau p is mgl by 2 sin theta. ip is ml square by 3. m's cancelling out here the L cancels off, making it simply L in denominator, and we are having 3G by 2L sine theta. So this is the answer, and that is nothing but option 1 given in the question. So we decide that our answer is this acceleration at this angular position, and the option we choose is option 1.